Good Monday, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Conversations Daddy News. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Well, it's a brand new day, it's a brand new week, which means it's a brand new opportunity for you to do something amazing, and it all begins today. But of course, you have your news headlines coming up on this Monday. We have a message from my book, Words That Choose to Live By, and in today's Entertainment Spotlight, you've been part of my conversation with best-selling author Rochelle Weinstein, talking about her brand new book and literary journey. Enjoy today's broadcast. For Conversation Daddy News, I'm Severus Webb with your Monday headlines. In national news, Senate negotiators announce a deal on guns, breaking logjam. Senate bargainers announce a bipartisan framework Sunday responding to last month's mass shootings, a noteworthy though limited breakthrough offering modest gun curbs and bolstered efforts to improve school safety and mental health programs. The proposal falls far short of tougher steps long sought by President Joe Biden and many Democrats. Even so, the accord was embraced by Biden, an enactment would signal a significant turnabout after years of gun massacres that have yielded little but stalemate in Congress. Biden said in a statement that the framework does not do everything that I think it needed, but it reflects important steps in the right direction and would be the most significant gun safety legislation to pass Congress in decades. Given the bipartisan support, there are no excuses for delay and no reason why it should not quickly move through the Senate and the House, he said. Leaders hope to push any agreement into law rapidly, they hope this month, before the political momentum fades that has been stirred by the recent mass shootings in Buffalo, New York and Uvalde, Texas. Participants caution that final details and legislative language remain to be completed, meaning fresh disputes and delays might emerge. In a consequential development, 20 senators, including 10 Republicans, released a statement calling for passage. That is potentially crucial because the biggest obstacle to enacting the measure is probably in the 50-50 Senate, where at least 10 GOP votes will be needed to attain the usual 60-vote threshold for approval. Families are scared, and it is our duty to come together and get something done that will help restore their sense of safety and security in their communities, the lawmakers said. The compromise would make the juvenile records of gun buyers under the age of 21 available when they undergo background checks. The suspects who killed 10 black people at a grocery store in Buffalo and 19 students and two teachers at an elementary school in Uvalde were both 18, and many perpetrators of recent years' mass shootings have been young. The agreement would offer money to states to enact and put in place red flag laws that make it easier to temporarily take guns from people considered potentially violent, plus funds to bolster school safety and mental health programs. Some people who informally sell guns for profit would be required to obtain federal dealer's license, which means they would have to conduct background checks of their buyers. In more national news, January 6th panelists say enough evidence uncovered to indict Trump. Members of the House Committee investigating the Capitol riot since Sunday, they have uncovered enough evidence for the Justice Department to consider an unprecedented criminal indictment against former President Donald Trump for seeking to overturn the results of the 2020 election. The committee announced that Trump's campaign manager is among the witnesses scheduled to testify at a hearing today that focuses on Trump's effort to spread his lies about a stolen election. The campaign manager was subpoenaed for his public testimony. As the hearings unfold, Representative Adam Schiff said he would like the department to investigate any credible allegation of criminal activity on the part of Donald Trump. Schiff, who also leads the House Intelligence Committee, said that there are certain actions, part of these different lines of effort to overtone the election, that I don't see evidence the Justice Department is investigating. The committee held its first public hearing last week with members laying out their case against Trump to show how the defeated president relentlessly pushed his false claims of a rigged election despite multiple advisors telling him otherwise and how he intensified his extraordinary scheme to overturn Joe Biden's victory. In more national news, Justin Bieber reveals rare disorder behind facial paralysis. Justin Bieber said a rare disorder that paralyzed half of the superstar's performer's face is the reason behind his tour postponement. The multi-Grammy winner is suffering from Ramsey Hunt syndrome, he said in the video he posted Friday on Instagram. The syndrome causes facial paralysis and affects nerves in the face through a shingles outbreak. In business news, average U.S. gasoline price jumps 39 cents to $5.10 per gallon. 
The average U.S. price of regular grade gasoline spiked 39 cents over the past three weeks to $5.10 per gallon, says the Associated Press. The average price at the pump is $1.97 higher than it was a year ago. And finally, in entertainment news, with Jurassic World 3, dinosaurs rule again at the box office. That made the top five movies over the weekend. Number one, Jurassic World Dominion with $143 million. Number two, Top Gun Maverick with $50 million. Number three, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness with $5 million. Number four, The Bob's Burger Movie with $2 million. And number five, The Bad Guys with $2 million. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's now time for a message from my book, Words That Choose to Live By. Enjoy. I'm Cyrus Webb, and welcome to Monday's edition of Words That Choose to Live By. Do not allow fear to keep you from reaching the levels of success that have been destined for you. You were created to bring something special to the world, so don't expect anything less for yourself. Acknowledge your greatness and walk in it. Have a great Monday. Rochelle Weinstein is featuring today's entertainment spotlight. We're here on Conversation Daily News. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with Entertainment Spotlight. A best-selling author Rochelle Weinstein joined me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about her literary journey and her brand new book. Here's a bit of our conversation. What has it been like for you to be able to identify what you love and now to be able to share that love with us? Um, it's certainly ner- it's, it's a combination of emotions. It's nerve-wracking. It's exciting. It's um, you know putting your baby out into the world to be poked at and looked at. But then there's some wonderfully gratifying moments and to see your accomplishment out in the world. And I'm just so grateful that this book is in readers' hands right now. And, and I think there is you know so much in this book, and we've kind of talked a bit about it as well. The main character is, is Avery. We're able to kind of take. Avery's journey, but there are some other points as well, and I did not mention this actually in our previous conversation, uh, and I'm curious as to how this falls with Rochelle when it comes to this lesson. One thing that Avery realizes is a lesson that fishermen are told, and I love this line, most fishermen will tell you that the key to success is patience. Uh, that that is that's found in chapter 25 of the book. You know, we as readers, we're not known as being patient. I don't think that's a word that most readers would uh, kind of embrace for themselves. How has being patient or the idea of patience and waiting, how has that kind of benefited you, Rochelle, on this journey as a storyteller? Oh, wow. I know that authors everywhere can relate to that. And I mean, listen, we're all impatient beings by nature and with social media and immediate gratification. But I have learned throughout this journey now, this is my sixth book. Um, I've just finished writing my seventh book. You, you know, try to find an agent, you know, getting the words onto the page. There's so many aspects to publishing, but you have to practice patience. You have to trust the journey. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for attending into this edition of Conversation Daily News. But we have to get on tomorrow's more news. Message from my book, Words That Choose to Live By. And of course, your entertainment spotlight. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversation Daily News today. Let's make it a great one.